Me? Uh, yeah. And uh, I would like to thank Professor Aum for inviting me to KAIST. This is my first time to visit uh, KAIST. And this is my second time ever I'm presenting in math department. The first presentation was at uh, SNU Math uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, a month ago, actually. Yeah. Uh, so this is a uh, joint work with uh, Yongku Che and Fuito Kojima and titled um, uh, Stable Matching in Large Economies. Uh, this paper studies uh, the problem of whether uh, uh, there exists a stable matching uh, in large economy. So well-known fact in the uh, matching theory field is that um, the existence of stable matching uh, requires uh, some strong assumption uh, if the market is small. Uh, and this assumption may not be very realistic in some matching markets. So, uh, so in, in this paper we study um, uh, matching problem, as I have said, but we focus on uh, two-sided, many-to-one matching. So, um, so matching market consists of two sides, and there are agents on both sides. And for instance, uh, on one side we have workers, on the other side we have farms, or doctors and hospitals, something like this. And the uh, agents on the one side, such as farms, hospitals, and public schools, are matched with multiple agents on the other side. For instance, multiple workers, multiple doctors, uh, multiple students. But uh, these guys are actually uh, uh, match it with uh, one agent on the other side. So uh, worker, um, in, in many cases, uh, each worker uh, can only work for a single farm and for, for doctors, uh, uh, students as well. So this is uh, what we call uh, many-to-one matching market. And there are many other examples. Uh, and, and, and we study uh, stable matching here. And stable matching uh, uh, has two properties, uh, individual rationality and absence of blocking coalition. Individual rationality means that um, the, a given matching uh, should not be rejected or blocked by a single agent. Uh, if there is no such blocking, then we call the matching individual rational. And also um, another, we, uh, um, uh, a property, absence of blocking collisions uh, requires um, the, the matching or given matching uh, not to admit uh, any blocking by coalition of workers, coalition of agents. Um, so in, in, in briefly, uh, matching is stable, it is not blocked by uh, individuals or it is not blocked by individuals or uh, coalitions. So, so stability of matching is actually important uh, for the long-term sustainability of matching mechanism. So there are many, ma ma there are many matching mechanisms in the real life, and uh, the matching mechanisms that are not able to produce stable matching actually uh, kind of disappear over the time. And, but uh, the, the matching mechanisms that can produce uh, stable matching uh, are still being used in many cases. So it's important for long-term sustainability of matching mechanism. And also, uh, it, is, uh, it has some uh, desirable properties uh, when applied to a uh, certain context. Uh, for instance, in the school choice problem, where students are matched with uh, schools, uh, stability is the same thing as no justified MB. So to explain this no justified MB property, suppose that you have two students and one student enter the KAIST and the, oh no, 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 the other student enter the SNU. And uh, student one in KAIST and student two in SNU. And suppose the student one, uh, student two, prefers KAIST to SNU, right? So this guy, student two, MB student one. But if KAIST also uh, likes student uh, two better than student one, then uh, the MB of the student two is justified, right? So there should not be no such uh, justified MB. So, and um, the existence of stable matching and the algorithm to find it is established by the seminal paper 
of Galen Shapley in uh, 1962. And there have been many generalizations since this paper, uh, especially in the many to one matching markets. Um, but all those literature, all those papers, um, uh, prove the existence of stable matching uh, by imposing uh, this assumption uh, called substitutability. So substitutability for the agents who are matched with multiple agents on the other side. So as I've said, schools or farms can be matched with multiple agents on the other side. And those uh, preference of those guys have to be uh, substitutable in order that uh, there exists a stable matching. Um, so sub, uh, substitu su uh, substitutability um, requires that, uh, <clears throat> suppose that uh, we have one worker who is rejected by a certain form, right? And then um, give the same form a bigger set of workers, or more workers are available to this form, and then uh, this worker who was rejected when the set was smaller should continue to be rejected, right? As the set of available workers grows. So if this condition is satisfied, then uh, we call this firm's preference substitutable. But in many cases, this preference assumption is violated. Uh, in particular, if there is uh, some complementarity in, uh, in the preference of the agents who are matched with multiple agents on the other side, or firms. Um, so so we, if the preferences are complementary, then uh, existence of stable matching is not guaranteed. And this is actually a serious limitation to the, uh, all this exercise of designing centralized matching mechanism. Because uh, all, all these uh, exercises uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, basically assume uh, there exists a stable matching. But if stable matching does not exist, then we have a problem. And so problem is actually is worse because this complementarity in preference is, is quite prevalent in ap applications. So for instance, firm uh, may uh, uh, <clears throat> like to hire some workers with complementary skills or sports teams, professional sports teams would like to hire some athletes with complementary skills or some public schools would like to admit uh, students from diverse backgrounds or diverse uh, uh, academic performance or something like that. And, and I'm going to give you a simple example uh, to show what kind of problem can happen if the uh, preference is complementary or if the preference is not substitutable. Suppose that we have the simplistic example where we have two forms, F1 and F2, and two workers, theta and theta prime. And, and this one uh, uh, denotes a preference relationship. So the, the guy in the left-hand side, uh, uh, in reference to this uh, notation, is more a uh, preferred guy to, to this one. So the f worker theta prefers from F1 to F2, F2 to unemployment. And worker theta prime prefers F2 to F F1 and F1 to unemployment. And from F1 uh, prefers the most um, hiring both workers. But the second choice is hiring none of them. So hiring only one worker is, 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 is the worst one. It's is, is worse than uh, hiring none of them. So this guy has a, a, a complementary preference, right? So to see why this is complementary, uh, let us go back to the previous, uh, why this is not substitutable, let us go back to previous definition of the substitutable preferences. So um, let me give this form one only worker theta. And then this form will reject theta, right? But if I add another worker theta prime to theta, then this guy 
hires both of them. Especially this guy hires theta in addition to theta prime. So as this theta prime becomes available, uh, now this firm F1 starts, starts hiring uh, the guy theta who has been rejected when only that worker is available. Right? So this one violates the uh, preference complementarity, uh, preference substitutability. And firm two uh, prefers theta to theta prime, theta prime to uh, hiring no one. Uh, but this guy would not like to hire uh, both of them. So in this case, we don't have uh, existence of stable matching. Let me go through an argument to show that. Uh, so these are the preferences I have shown you in the previous slide. So for, uh, first of all, uh, we have only two cases where stable matching can possibly exist. One case where the firm F1 hires both workers, and the other case where this firm F hires no one. Right? If there is a matching where firm F1 hires only a single worker, then this guy will be better off by rejecting this guy, right? So it's not individually rational because this guy alone can uh, block this matching where uh, F1 hires only a single worker. So the stability or individual rationality requires uh, this firm F1 to hire both, uh, both workers or none of them. And the first case, Suppose that F1 hires uh, both workers, which means that firm 2 hires no worker, right? But remember that this guy prefers hiring uh, either of them to hiring no one, right? And, but theta guy, which is currently hired by F1, prefers firm F1 uh, more than F2. Right? So this guy would not, like, would not like to move to form 2, but theta prime prefers F2 to F1. So this guy would like to move to F2. But if F2 hires theta prime, then this guy is now better off because this guy will hire uh, one worker instead of hiring no one. Right? So uh, the matching where form F1 hires both workers is blocked by this coalition consisting of F2 not F2 prime, F2 and F theta, theta prime. And let us move to the other case where F1 hires no workers. In this case, both workers are available for firm 2, right? But firm 2 likes this theta better than theta prime. So in order for matching to be stable, firm F2 will have to hire theta, right? Which means that this theta prime is unemployed, right, in this matching. But given this, firm 1 can block, can form a blocking coalition along with theta, theta prime, and himself. Because this guy is unemployed, this guy will be willing to uh, be hired by F1. And theta guy, who is currently hired by F2, likes firm 1 better than firm 2. So this guy would like to move to firm 1. And which means that firm one can hire both of them so that uh, it can get better off, right? So we don't have any stable matching in this case, in, the, in this simple example. Uh, so uh, our paper shows that this non-existence problem disappears or vanishes, uh, or not disappears, it vanishes in large markets. Uh, in other words, uh, existence of stable, ma stable matching is restored in large economies. So, so I will give you uh, some more examples uh, to clarify what I mean by building upon the previous example. Uh, I will show you a general model later, and but most result, main results uh, uh, can be uh, explained by the examples I'm giving you. So. So now, uh, uh, economy is large, but fi still finite. Um, so think of a case, the same form 1 and form 2. And now we have uh, uh, multiple workers for each type. So for, uh, 
uh, for each type, we have Q uh, uh, number of workers. So Q, suppose the Q is odd, odd number. And the firm's preference, uh, workers' preferences are the same. So all Q workers of type theta have this preference. All Q workers of type theta prime have this preference. Now we need to modify a firm's preference a little bit to, to accommodate multiple workers for each type. So uh, f uh, f uh, for firm one, the, f the best uh, choice is to hire all the workers, I mean, the same number for, for uh, both types. But second best option is to like Q minus one workers for each type and, and so on, right? In other words, this guy would like to hire the same number of workers for uh, two types, for, for, for both types of workers. Uh, so still, this guy's preference is complementary. Uh, so, so we have uh, Q workers of type theta and Q workers yeah. of theta. Yeah, uh, two times Q workers in total. Uh, so in this list, it means that any, anything not in this combination here is below hiring number. Um, that's not actually... You, would. you can, yeah, but that's kind of odd, some, like odd preference, so, so, but we can be more general than that. Mm -hmm. For instance, Q workers of theta and Q minus workers of theta prime it can be between this one and, and something like that. We are kind of leaving all other uh, preferences unspecified here because yeah, that's not important here. And for form two's preference, so form two's preference is based on the preference for single, uh, single workers. So, Firm 2 prefers theta to theta prime and theta prime to unemployment as before. And but uh, this guy has a capacity Q. What it means that uh, is that up to capacity Q, Firm 2 would like to hire as many workers of type uh, theta uh, uh, workers as available, right? And if all these workers are exhausted, but there is still some remaining capacity, then this guy switches to uh, the less preferred workers and starts hiring theta prime guys and up to capacity. So this kind of preference uh, we call responsive preference. And F1 has a complementary preference. And it is easy to extend the previous argument uh, to this case to show that there does not exist table matching uh, in, in, in this uh, extended uh, example, if Q is odd. So the same preferences, but think about this matching. So this matching mu. This matching mu is, is not stable because there does not exist any stable matching in this example. But think about this example, uh, this matching mu. So so for each type, theta and theta prime, Q plus one divided by two workers are hired by F1, the same number. And all the remaining workers are hired by F2. And this matching is unstable, but this is kind of approximately stable if Q is very large because there's only one, uh, one blocking collision against this matching mu. And that blocking collision is, is something like this. So total number of workers hired by firm F2 is Q minus one, right? So there is one vacancy for this guy, but this F2 would like to fill that vacancy because it has capacity equal to Q. And so this guy, can attract this one guy, cannot be, cannot be theta because theta prefers F1 to F2, so it has to be theta prime. This guy can attract this theta prime away from F1 to, to F2, right? And this is the only blocking collision that is possible in, in given this matching mu. And, and, and this blocking collision is, you can say that it's very small. Right? So if, if Q is very large, right? So that you can say that this matching mu is kind of approximately stable if the market is very large, 
or if Q is very, very big, big number. And moreover, now, um, let us extend this model to a continuum economy now, where we have a, a unit mass of workers, continuum of workers, and measure of each type is equal to half. So this is like, uh, in the previous example, we had two Q workers, and here we kind of normalized the total number of workers uh, by 2Q or divide, uh, divide it by 2Q and, and send this Q to infinity. So then you'll have this kind of uh, uh, case. So same preferences for workers and now firm's preferences are uh, slightly different because we have continuum of workers here but they are basically uh, follows the previous preferences. So now the number of workers firm F1 can hire is, can be any number uh, uh, greater, uh, less than or equal to one half for each, each type. And now we have an exactly stable matching. We just uh, divide all the workers, divide each uh, work, uh, uh, worker type by halves and give it to form F1 and F2. And it's easy to show that this is exactly stable. There is no blocking collision. Given that um, the form's preferences are continuous or major zero uh, change of workers is, is negligible. And the previous two examples illustrate the uh, main results of the paper. Uh, 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 the main results of the paper shows that if form preferences are continuous, then uh, we first establish um, in stable matching always exists in a continuum economy. And secondly, we proved that, based on the first existence result, we proved that um, there exists an approximately stable matching in large economy. So we are kind of going in opposite direction uh, to establish these two results uh, as the, the direction I have shown you the examples. And I first uh, gave you the approximately stable matching and then uh, gave you the uh, exactly stable matching in the continuum economy. But in, in our paper, we first established stable matching existence in the continuum economy, and then we use that result to establish the existence of approx approximately stable matching in large finite economy. So there are a bunch of papers that study uh, this kind of problem. Uh, so there are papers about matching in large economies because we are looking at lar large economy. These all, all these papers are related. Also, there are papers uh, that study uh, st matching with complementarity, complementary preferences. And we are kind of making bridge uh, between these two literatures. And, and our existence result is based on fixed point methodology. So basically, we set up a fixed point mapping. We set up a mapping whose fixed point set is equal to the set of uh, stable matching. Uh, and then we show that the uh, fixed point exists. That that mapping has a, has a fixed point. Uh, so, uh, any questions so far? So, let me then proceed to the uh, model of uh, uh, continuum economy. So we have n firms here. So set of firms is denoted as F. And we have unit mass of workers. And this one uh, denotes a null form. So uh, this F tilde is a union of F and null form. So, so F tilde basically uh, refers to all available options for workers, right? So this is unemployment. Uh, and worker type is denoted by theta, and this theta uh, uh, belongs to this uh, type set, uh, capital theta. We assume that this capital theta is a com compact matrix space, and this sigma, capital sigma is, the, uh, is a Borel sigma algebra uh, defined on this uh, uh, type space. And then we, ha we have a uh, 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 
uh, this uh, distribution G or uh, measure G, which uh, corresponds to measure of workers. Uh, we are not making any assumption on this measure. Can be uh, continuous or can be discontinuous in an ugly way. And, and then, um, so let me first uh, uh, mention this P. So this P is preference of uh, workers, so like uh, ranking of the firms for each worker. So form one, form two, form three, and something like that. So there are many uh, such rankings, right? So all, uh, the, the, the set of all such rankings is, is uh, script P. And the subset of worker types with this sp uh, particular preference P is denoted as a uh, capital theta P. So which is, uh, sorry, this is subset of this data. And, and then uh, we need to introduce uh, a notion uh, called uh, subpopulation. Suppose that we have uh, uh, two measures, two distributions, x and x prime defined on this uh, type space. And we call this uh, measure x a subpopulation of x prime and denote it in this fashion if the follow following is true. So uh, consider any uh, measurable set E and, and the measure of this E under this x is always smaller than or equal to the measure of the same set under this x prime. And if this is true, then uh, this x is subpopulation of x prime. It's kind of smaller measure, and x prime is a bigger measure. And then this script x is the set of all uh, subpopulations of G. So because the firm can only hire uh, that is existing in the economy. So that uh, the, 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 the measure a firm can hire is, the, is a, a subpopulation of this entire uh, measure G, right? So. So P, these are going to be subsets of firms. P, no, no. So P is like, suppose it, uh, you have two firms, and then uh, and, and, and this one. And the particular P uh, will look like, uh, like F2, F1, or just the ranking. Yeah, so Order. so or ordering of these. Ordering of the old, yeah. Ordering of the all the firms belonging to F tilde, yeah. And the script P is the set of all such rankings, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And where is the preference of the firm? This is going to be the measure. Right? That's what I'm going to explain oh. right now. Yeah, <laughs> a firm's preference is uh, represented by a choice function, so that uh, this choice function CF. So CF uh, is something like. Uh, Suppose that uh, the measure x is available for this firm f to hire, and then this c f of x gives the best choice for this firm out of this available measure of workers x, right? So that uh, this c f of x has to be subpopulation of this x or smaller measure of x because firm can only hire uh, uh, those workers that are available to to, to him, right? So, and w the only assumption we are making on this mapping is this: we build the preference property, which is very standard in econ economics. So maybe you have uh, already learned this kind of property appearing in the intermediate microeconomics course. So this rebuild preference property is. Um, I'm not going to explain what it means, but it's very standard assumption. So basically the same thing as uh, assuming that the firms are maximizing their kind of utilities or maximizing their pre preferences. Rational, they are rational agents, right? So a very standard assumption. So let us go back to our leading example where uh, measure of each type is equal to half, right? Uh, suppose that, so this x1 and x1 prime, wh wh what is this? Uh, so xi and xi prime are the 
measure of type theta workers and type theta prime workers respectively that are available to form F, Fi. So, so x1 and x1 prime are the uh, measure of uh, workers uh, available to form one for type uh, theta and theta prime. And given this, the form one who has complementary preferences would like to hire the same number for both workers because it has to be the same number it can only be a minimum of these two, right? And for the form two's preference, given available uh, vector of workers, x to x prime, is something like this. Remember that form two prefers worker type theta to theta prime, so this guy first hires as many theta workers as possible, and capacity of this form was equal to, oh, oh, sorry, Right, capacity of this form was equal to one half, right? And this one denotes the remaining capacity after hiring x2 of theta workers. And given the number of uh, theta prime workers, this form can only hire a minimum of those two numbers, right? Yeah. And now we define this rejection, re rejection function by uh, sub subtracting this choice function from this x. So, so, this is, so these guys are the, uh, 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 represents the measure of workers that are rejected by this form f, given that um, measure x is available to form f. And now uh, we are ready to define uh, matching. Matching m is a, a vector of measures one measure for each form in this uh, F tilde. So each F MF is subpopulation of G, right? And also, if you add them up, then it has to equal to, has to equal this G, right? This is very simple definition of matching. Um, then what is stable matching? In order to define stable matching, we need to, uh, define another mapping. So, uh, so which can be a bit complicated to, to understand, but let's take a look at this mapping. So this mapping is demapping. So suppose that we have a, a matching M, it's a uh, vector of measures, then uh, we define this function for each form F, given this uh, matching M. And what is this mapping? This mapping uh, returns another measure, given a uh, vector of measures. And basically, this mapping gives us the measure of workers who are happy to match with F, given M. So take a look at this definition. Why this one corresponds to the measure of workers who are happy to match with F, given M. So focus on particular uh, preference for workers, P, and these guys like uh, follows this preference, P. And, and given this P, um, think about forms F prime that is no better than F. So, so these guys are now matched with forms that are no better than F, right? So these guys, will be happy to match with F because some of them will be will current, uh, are currently matched with F but some others are matched with worse forms, right? And those guys would like to move to form F, right? So that, so all these guys are actually the measure of uh, workers who are happy to match with form F, right? And you add these measures across all P so that so this uh, mapping gives us the measure of workers who are happy to match with format. So this is important for defining the stability notion. So now we define the stable matching here. So stable matching has uh, two properties, individual rationality and no blocking collision. So first individual rationality. So, um, so in order for this uh, vector of measure or match matching to be stable, um, or individually rational, we have to have uh, this matching individual rational for workers and also forms. What is the individual rationality for workers? 
So first of all, for think about any preference P for which this particular form F is worse than unemployment. And the measure of those workers hired by this form F has to be zero, right? right? And also, for forms in visual rationality, if you give this MF as an available uh, measure of workers to form F, this F should not be rejecting no, any of them, right? So this uh, uh, choice function CF has to return the same uh, MF, right? Otherwise, this mapping is not individual rational because this form F itself can fire some positive measure of workers, right? If this is not true. Uh, second property is uh, no blocking coalition property. So uh, basically, it basically says that the matching should not be blocked by coalition of uh, firm and uh, workers. So that it, there should not exist uh, a firm and some subpopulation MF prime, which is different from MF. Right? Then uh, this MF prime uh, has to satisfy these two conditions. First of all, first of all, this notation. So this is the notation. Uh, kind of, uh, you already know what this notation means, right? So this is soup, soup of uh, two measures. So in other words, so MF uh, join MF prime is the uh, the smallest measure such that both MF and MF prime are uh, uh, this uh, subpopulation of this. So this is a lattice theory, a theoretic uh, 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 operation. So, so this uh, measure basically uh, refers to uh, the measure of workers that are uh, hired by F under M or under M F prime. Right? So if you give all these workers to form F, then form F chooses M F prime rather than M F. But the problem is that this MF prime workers are actually subpopulation of this. What, what is this? This is the, the measure of workers who are happy to match with F, right? So given the fact that this MF prime is subpopulation of uh, this one, means that all these guys are available for this form F can attract, right? So th these guys would like to move to form F or maybe just stay in form F if they're already hired by form F. And these guys are just have to, to rematch with form F. And also MF prime is better than MF because given this bigger measure, form F would like to hire MF prime rather than MF. So that both form F and MF prime guys are happy. So that this one forms a blocking coalition, right? So there should not be any such pair. So in fact, you can uh, think about a bigger coalition consisting of multiple forms and multiple uh, 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 measures of workers. But uh, it actually is sufficient to, to consider this, uh, 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 this kind of blocking coalition consisting of a um, uh, 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 single form and, and uh, this subpopulation for this single form. And then, as I have uh, uh, told you, uh, we proved the existence of stable matching in this economy um, by introducing a, a mapping, uh, a fixed point mapping, so which is denoted as T. And uh, it looks ugly, but not very, <laughs> not too ugly, because um, so let me explain this one later. So suppose that we already uh, define this mapping uh, T, then uh, we have this uh, characterization theorem. So uh, if some matching M is stable, then uh, process uh, this M through this mapping D and define uh, the corresponding vector as X. And this x 
has to be a fixed point of this mapping T. And the, the opposite direction also holds. If we have a, a fixed point X for this uh, mapping T, then uh, we can cook up a, a stable matching using this X in this fashion. So simply going through uh, this choice function given this X. So this M is stable matching. So that so we have a kind of a, a equivalence between set of stable uh, matchings uh, and the set of fixed point for this mapping T, right? Uh, then what is this mapping T? Uh, so first of all, uh, let us define this FP minus. What is the FP minus? So this is a uh, uh, so the P denotes a, a particular preference for workers. So at P minus is immediate predecessor for firm F. In other words, it is a, a firm exactly one ranking above F in terms of this preference P. So for instance, if F is this one, null firm, then F P minus is this one. Immediate, immediate, uh, just one ranking above this one. And then something like that. And now uh, take a look at this mapping. So, so give a vector of uh, worker measures x, right? And then you give another measure of workers to this form f. Uh, what is this measure? So think about a form that is exactly one ranking, one ranking above this form f, and then think about this x for this form, and calculate the, the measure of workers that are rejected by this immediate predecessor, and give it to form f, and so on. So if this form f is on the top of this preference p, uh, such as this guy, and then there is no immediate pre predecessor. In this case, you, you uh, give this form f the entire measure, g. But if this guy is not on the top, then you give this guy a measure of workers that are rejected by immediate predecessor, right? given this x, x vector. And once you find a fixed point of this one, then you can show that there is equivalence between this fixed point and the stable, stable matching. So it's a vector of uh, measures, right? Xf is a measure. Yeah, vector of measures. One measure for each firm. So measure x can be considered as a measure of available workers, right? Because as you see here, this is measure of available workers. Given this, what firm F chooses is the, the MF. This is the, 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 the measure of workers that are hired by firm F. So this is just what I explained. And but so we have a characterization result, and then uh, we need another we need an assumption on the firm's preference. Um, so we require that uh, each firm F's preference is continuous in the sense that um, uh, for any sequence of measures and limit point x, uh, limit point in the sense of uh, the weak star topology because we are dealing with this uh, space of uh, probability measures or not exactly probability measures because they do not need to add up to one but uh, this is a finite additive measures and, and, and then our form's choice given this xk has to converge to form's choice given this x so form choice function is basically required to be continuous. So if CF is continuous on the weak star topology. And 
So our previous example satisfies this assumption. And also, if the mar market is very large, so for instance, if there is a continuum of workers, then it is natural to assume that firm's preference is, is continuous. So continuity is to give you some sense of continuity. So continuity requires that if you change the uh, set of available workers or measure of available workers slightly, then the firm choice should also change slightly, right? So, and then the, the next theorem uh, says that if each firm has a continuous preference, then there exists a stable matching. And the way we prove is, uh, we uh, first show that the, uh, this continuity assumption for firm preferences implies uh, this continuity for mapping T. Then the set of all subpopulations or script X is compact set. So you can uh, prove this one using this uh, Al Alaoglu theorem, uh, Banach Alaoglu theorem. And then we applied Kakutani van Glicksberg fixed point theorem to show that uh, this mapping T has fixed point. And then uh, the existence of stable matching uh, immediately follows from our characterization theorem. Right? Because the, uh, the fixed point for mapping T translates into a stable matching. So if a uh, fixed point exists, then stable matching also exists. And we don't have a strong intuition for this result, but uh, rough intuition is, very rough intuition is, is as follows. If you have continuum workers, then uh, a work, uh, and also if you assume uh, that firm's preferences are continuous, then workers who are matched to firm kind of changes continuously, right? So that uh, the supply and demand of workers can, can balance out. Um, so, so any questions so far? Could you say Kakutani and Glicks for Uh I actually, <laughs> I cannot exactly remember the state of statement of the theorem, but this is a generalization of the Kakutani's fixed point theorem to the, uh, I guess it's uh, to the space of a functional, uh, the functional space. Yeah. So the reason we are using this Kakutani theorem is that um, uh, our model is actually more general than this one. We, so the choice function uh, assumes that it firm has a single choice, single best choice for any given population. Uh, but we are allowing for actually multiple optimal choices, multiple best choices, or we are allowing for choice correspondences in our main model. So firm's optimal choice, choice function can be, can be, uh, uh, can be correspondence rather than function, so that we are relying on this Kakutani uh, uh, fixed point theorem. But uh, the generalization of Kakutani fixed point theorem to the functional space is uh, Kakutani fan clicks for fixed point theorem. <laughs> if you're interested, you can look up the, some textbook <laughs> about uh, all fixed point theorem that are not all, but most fixed point theorem that are existing. So, so, so there, are some, uh, there is some book about it, yeah. Um, and, and based on our existence result in the continuum economy, we can establish the existence of approximately stable matching in the finite economy as well. So uh, in finite economy, we have finite number of workers, but the same set of forms, F1 to Fn. And, and so Q, is the number of all workers, uh, total number of workers. So we are making this Q grow to infinity. And, and each worker has a type in the same type space data. Uh, but only there are Q workers now. And uh, the, the measure of all available workers is denoted by this GQ. This is discrete uh, measure. So we are normalizing uh, the, the number of workers 
uh, uh, to get this uh, discrete measure by dividing the number of workers with Q. So, and then uh, subpopulation in this economy is denoted as XQ. So XQ is subpopulation of uh, this GQ. And this XQ is also a discrete uh, measure. And uh, in other words, for each data, both GQ of theta and XQ of theta are multiples of 1 over Q. And what is firm's uh, preference? Firm preference is represented by the choice function CQ. So give, if you give subpopulation of workers uh, XQ to this firm, so XFQ, sorry. So XFQ returns the optimal uh, set of workers or firm F choice from this discrete measure XQ. Uh, Oh, I forgot to erase this part, so if, uh, ignore this one. Uh, and, and we say that, uh, so this uh, finite economy, uh, gamma, capital gamma Q converges to continuum economy gamma. Uh, so I didn't, I haven't introduced uh, the, these two notations. So, so gamma just re uh, refers to an economy uh, that consists of uh, firms and workers. And just, and gamma Q uh, refers to a finite economy, uh, uh, the economy that I've just uh, introduced in, in previous slide. So we say that this gamma Q converges to continuum economy gamma as Q uh, uh, goes to infinity if this uh, total measure of worker GQ uh, converges to uh, this measure in the limit economy, continuum economy G. Um, uh, in the sense of uh, <clears throat> weak convergence, and also uh, for each x q and x such that x q converges to x, firm choice also converges to uh, uh, this f the same firm choice as c f q and c f. So sorry for uh, omitting this f. So the so c f of q uh, converges to this c f given x, q, and x. And then uh, we have this uh, second uh, main result of the paper. So fix any epsilon and any sequence of economies that converges to continuum economy gamma, then you can find sufficiently large economy Q or gamma Q uh, where there exists uh, a matching MQ, so MFQ for each firm F, in this finite economy that satisfies the following property. So satisfies this property. So for any coalition F and M tilde F of Q that blocks this MQ, the distance between MFQ and MF tilde Q is less than if you want. So that <coughs> this matching may not be stable, but any blocking collision, any collision that blocks uh, this matching MF is near this, this M. It's very close to this original matching. What do you mean by the distance? Yeah. Distance is uh, the, this uh, the distance in the weak star topology. That, that metrizes this, what, what is that uh, measure? I forgot the name of the measure. Um, there is a measure, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is the measure? Uh, levy, levy metric. Levy something like that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, these are the, the, the main results in the paper. And we have uh, some more results in the, uh, like this. So, so far we just focused on the uh, uh, stable matching. But we actually um, didn't explain how we can obtain preferences of, for, for instance, workers. 
For instance, workers' preferences may only known to them, not to the designer of the matching mechanism. In this case, we should be able to, to induce workers to tell the truth about their preferences. So which uh, that property is something called incentive, compa incentive compatibility. So we want me matching mechanism to be incentive compatible in the sense that given this mechanism, workers should have an incentive to tell truth about their preferences. And, and we show in the paper that there, is, there exists a matching mechanism that produces a matching that is both stable and incentive compatible. So stability and incentive compatibility can be satisfied simultaneously. And if you make uh, this uh, preference uh, substitutability assumption in continuum economy, then uh, you can obtain uh, these standard results that are also true in the finite economy. So, so as we know, uh, the f if as, as is well known, uh, if uh, preferences are uh, substitutable, then uh, there always exists a stable matching. Uh, actually, there exists side optimal stable matchings or stable matchings that is best for workers out of all stable matching or stable matching that is best for firms out of all stable matching. And in fact, the set of stable matchings has a lattice, a lattice structure. And once we assume this uh, preference substitutability, we can, the same, we can establish the same property in the continuum economy uh, once you assume this, uh, uh, make this assumption. And also you can show this rule hospital theorem. What is this? Uh, in the finite economy, um, if the preferences are substitutable, then the set of unemployed workers remains the same across all stable matchings. So that is true in the uh, continuum economy as well, uh, along with this assumption, once you make this assumption. Uh, we have a, 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 a unique resu uniqueness result as well. So this is, the, 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 we actually give a condition, sufficient condition uh, for there to be a unique stable matching. And as I have said, uh, we uh, can deal with uh, choice correspondences um, as well as choice functions. We can apply this choice correspondence model to some uh, uh, interesting examples such as timeshare or probabilistic matching model. We can also s uh, show that there exists a stable matching um, um, which also satisfies a strong stability. Uh, in this framework. Uh, and, and then um, we, can, we can also uh, um, accommodate uh, matching it contracts. So, so far, the, each worker uh, can be hired by uh, firms under a fixed term of uh, wage or contract. But you can actually endogenize the uh, contract terms and still show that there exists stable matching. Uh, so, summary. And there are some actually uh, interesting questions we, we couldn't actually uh, um, tag in this paper. Uh, the most important question is this one. So the, we, we don't have any algorithm to find stable or approximately stable matching. So as I told you in the introduction, the seminal paper by uh, uh, Galen Shapley actually establishes the existence of stable matching by giving us an algorithm to find it, right? But in our case, we rely on fixed point theorem, so we don't have any alg algorithm here. So it, the algorithm basically uh, an algorithm to find the fixed point for this mapping T, uh, I guess. But, uh, but didn't you say you have a mechanism? 
Excuse me? You, you said in the critical slide you have That one. mechanism is not a mechanism to find the uh, stable matching. Uh, uh, it's a, uh, what, what is mechanism? Um, so it's economic mechanism. Right. In the sense that, so you don't know about workers' preferences, right? So workers actually announce their preferences to mechanism designer and the mechanism designer collects to that information about workers' preferences. So that will give you uh, workers' uh, distribution, right? And given this distribution, you, you can uh, use this mapping T to calculate the stable matchings, right? So you have a bunch of stable matchings, oh, you but you pick the one that gives agents, to in agents incentive to tell the truth. Mm. So it still goes to the fixed point. Yeah, yeah, still goes to the fixed point, yeah, yeah. So then we want to have uh, uh, real-world applications. <laughs> so 